Japaner ins Werk, um sich die neuesten Entwicklungen anzuschauen. Well, you just saw a little bit of a film about how the Japanese went over to East Germany <coughs> and looked at the camera production and what they were doing over there and making the cameras. And you can see that there was a copying going on of the Japanese uh, camera industry of the, of the East Germans. And so this, if you like, is a historical evolution from the, the contact range finder camera all the way through the various models. Uh, all these models are German models culminating in the Miranda, which was the first single lens pentaprism camera in Japan. And I feel the most important company to focus on because it could have been the greatest, except it was destroyed in the same way that the German industries were destroyed. And so we're going to examine that in a little bit of detail later on in the video. <clears throat> I'll take five. <clears throat> now Japan was a highly developed empire before the war together with the Russians and the Western powers. And so all of these powers had technology, they highly developed technology and photographic technology. So the Japanese used to produce their own lenses and their own cameras and in their own way they were they developed in um, a special Japanese kind of way and they were highly skilled craftsmen who made these cameras and so it wasn't necessary to create a camera industry in Japan after the war it already existed yet it was not copying so much what the Germans were doing it was creating its own thing if you like and what happened after the globalists dropped the bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki and basically forced Japan to capitulate um, otherwise face genocide, then the Japanese really became the slaves of the Western hegemony. And <clears throat> just like the Germans did. So the Japanese were in the same position as the Germans, except the Japan was wholly owned, if you like, by the West, and it could be used completely by the West to further the aims and ambitions of the globalists. So after the war, there was a similar takeover that happened in Japan as what happened in West Germany and East Germany was the player if you like that was kind of more independent and the origin of camera production. Now if you go back to just after the war you'll see that the Japanese introduced a camera which is virtually an identical copy of this camera. Now this camera was taken to the USSR and the Allied powers must have taken, somehow taken, the same camera, the contacts from Dresden and moved it into Japan quickly. We don't know how they did this. I'll put some pictures up of the Japanese camera that was produced and you'll see the similarities between that and the one I've just shown you. Yeah, I'll put it a bit closer so you can see it. Now 
notice that it has the same focusing mechanism which is really unique to this camera and so this would all be patented and somehow the Japanese were allowed to break all of the patent laws of the East Germans. Now we don't know exactly what happened but we do know that after the war the Dresden fell into the eastern side of the division of Germany and some American troops came from the west from the Weimar direction and drove in specifically into Dresden and yeah, into Jena and arrested all of the heads of Zeiss, Karl Zeiss, in, uh, in, I presume it was in Jena, but it could have been Jena and Dresden, I'm not sure, well, no, nobody's sure, and they took the, all of the drawings, the, uh, the drawings, the diagrams, all of the plans for the camera production, and they, together with the 80 of the heads, against their wishes, to the west. They just bundled them up with their families and took the drawings and took them to West Germany. <clears throat> now, Nikon Kogaku, before the war, was the main and only lens producer, apparently, in Japan. And although I question that, Now Canon was making a 35mm rangefinder camera, a, basically a direct copy of a Leica from about 1933 and Nippon Kogaku had made some lenses for Canon and they seemed to be working together Nippon Kogaku that became Nikon seemed to be working towards a wheel based system they built, built a wheel based system for Canon anyway after the war, suddenly Nikon was able to produce the identical camera almost to this. The same lens mount and everything so that you could put a lens from the Nikon onto the contacts and they would interchange. But there were some differences and they don't know whether, a small difference, so they don't know whether it was a mistake or what. But it was something to do with the fact that they were making, Nip and Kogaku were making lenses for the Canon camera and so there were some sort of shortcuts in other words to join the lens to the new context based Nikon rangefinder which may well have been made from the engineering drawings that were stolen um, by the Allies after the war. And so that's enough about that side of the things. Really we're talking about single lens reflexes and the company that started all of that in Japan was this company which was started as Orion, the Orion Camera Company that changed its name to Miranda. And these people were taken over by a company called the Allied Import Export Company. You sound a bit of a suspicious name. Uh, I'll put up some information about Allied Impex on the screen as we move through this. So if you want to read some of the information I was able to dig up on the internet, you can do. But basically, Miranda was taken over by the American company and bought out, if you like. And they were producing some very good cameras. In actual fact, this camera here is the pinnacle of the Miranda camera line 
and it's probably as good a camera as you'll find anywhere on this table anywhere in the house because it has a finer version of the German cameras it's made with smaller Japanese hands it's very fine very fine indeed uh, very it's, it's a heavy camera well engineered I would say that the lenses are not as good as the German lenses but the actual um, system aspects of the camera are very very good you can take the top off it's, it's, it, it's wonderful the way it works it's, and then you have your interchangeable finder system and so on so it's a system camera and it's the first camera the Miranda was the first I'll put up the original camera it's not much different to this it's essentially the same engineering they did round the corners off a little bit on this model and uh, just to make a few aesthetic changes but it's essentially the same as the 1956 camera and so this was the first single lens reflex in Japan and it's not surprising because the guys that developed this were the people who made devices which could couple um, Nikon lenses to contact lenses and Leica Leica bodies and like they, they made the, the interconnecting pieces and before they made this they made a special reflex housing that you could put onto your contacts and or, or Nikon it would convert it into a single lens reflex camera that you could look through and, um, and I'll put some pictures of that up on the screen and so that was our and they made lenses so they say that Nikon Kangaku was the only lens manufacturer but there's talk about these people making their own lenses. This is a Miranda lens. And the strange thing is, is that they took Miranda, the Allied Input Export Company, and they changed its name to Sonigor. And, and the Sonigor is a, is a tarnished brand. I remember my father bought a Sonigor lens and it was regarded as a fairly low quality lens. And I have a Sonigor lens This is a solid lens here and you can see that the actual it looks like it could well be the same it definitely is made this part of the lens is so similar to the Miranda it could well have been the Miranda that Miranda were the original lens making arm of Sonigo if you like and uh, I'll put an advert on the page about what Allied Impex did with Soligor, how they tried to create their own brand Soligor and this was especially a cheap as a Scotsman's brand. It's quite a funny advert of why anybody would do this with a high quality camera like the Miranda to, to, to sell it off cheap. And all they did was, was sell it based on, you know, to, to, to sell it at a price, just to shift boxes if you like. And the people that made this were obviously were fine engineer craftsmen and it's just a shame really that they destroyed the company and they uh, you'll read out the, one of the direct because they changed the ownership thing they made it so foreigners couldn't own companies in Japan and so one of the directors had to move over to Japan and live in Japan for them to carry on owning Miranda and once he got there, he just messed everything up. He just told everybody what to do, and they produced some really, really bad-looking, horrible-looking cameras, uh, which tarnished their name. And eventually, they, by 1959, they were one of the top brands, the top brand in, of camera in Japan. And in 1959, they stopped distributing them in, in Japan, and they only exported them whether that was a requirement of the Allied X company or not, or whether the um, Japanese institutions refused to handle them because of the uh, corruption of the company, if you like. I don't know. And what happened to the original engineers, they probably ended up at Nikon or somewhere like that. But that was the death of Miranda. By 1973, Miranda was finished. And so what, what, what started off as the greatest camera made in Japan, great system camera, better than the Nikon F, I feel, 
um, eventually became one of the worst cameras under the guidance, if you like, of the Allied Impex company. And I found remnants of Miranda in Switzerland and Germany. There's still remnants of the uh, connections that Allied Impex had with, um, with the Europeans somehow. They, um, Miranda. And eventually the brand Miranda was used uh, to bring out Cosina made cameras. And I'll show you that Cosina camera which is so nice. This is what you heard fall down. Yeah, this is the MS2. Gonna turn it on. Beautiful little camera. So in the end, Miranda, the, the beginning and the end. In the end, beautiful little camera. In the beginning, a beautiful little camera. And so in the end, a beautiful little camera. And again, the name Miranda is on the uh, Cosina lens. And a great lens it is too. And um, the name Miranda was on the original lens. So you can see that Miranda was vilified in the end to say there was nothing wrong with the name of Miranda. But Sonagor, you can forget it. And uh, the Scotsman of uh, lenses, if you like, and cameras. They even had a Miranda with Sonagor written across the top of it. It just looked so tacky and bad, it just destroyed the whole image of the camera completely. Okay.